Crash Connell. It is Friday, January 12, 2024. Here in Northeast Wisconsin, we are under a winter storm warning and also a blizzard warning mm-hmm. here. But we love the truth so much, we trekked through it so you yes. could be a part of this fresh new podcast. Yeah, today. the mailman's got nothing on us. Here we are. And uh, it's going to turn very ugly. Schools are closed um, late in the day. And then uh, sub-zero wind chills Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and on and on. It's winter. So I am so glad you're with me today on this Friday, January the 12th. We have Pete Garcia back with us. And I'm happy to welcome him back and get his perspective on some critical issues for us here in 2024. But first, my scripture, which today is Psalm 8, 1 through 5. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth, who have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants you have ordained strength because of your enemies, that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor." Let's pray together this morning. Lord, we trust in you for all things pertaining to life and godliness. As the culture winds down, we ask for increasing wisdom and endurance to accomplish your will for us and those uh, in our lives, those we touch day to day. Help us to be bold and uncompromising. We lift Pete up to you. Thank you for his testimony, his gifts, his love for the truth. We pray for good health and protection for him, for all needs to be met according to your riches and your abundant grace in Jesus name. Amen. Like I said, we have Pete Garcia back with us. He's a retired military combat veteran and aviator, writer, researcher, speaker, teacher of Bible prophecy and apologetics. He has a BA in international relations and a gra- is a graduate of the US Army's prestigious Command and General Staff College. He wrote for Jack Kinsella's The Omega Letter from 2011 to 18. And he's written hundreds of articles that are carried on many websites and platforms. And he's uh, contributed and written chapters to three Terry James published books. He's co-written two nonfiction books and published three of his own Christian fiction novels. His website is rev310.net. That's R-E-V and the numbers 310.net. Pete, thank you for your service and welcome back to Stand Up For The Truth. Well, thank you and thanks for having me again. Great to have you back. I want to ask you, and this might be just an obvious question, but why Revelation 3.10? Tell us about that a little bit. Uh, Well, you know, for me, that's one of the strongest proofs that the Church does not go through the Tribulation. Mm -hmm. Um, There's really no way to argue against it. For one, it's Jesus speaking. Two, it's speaking directly to the Church. And then three... He's uh, promised to keep us from the very time of what's coming Mm -hmm. on the whole world uh, to test everybody that's on the earth. So Mm -hmm. this is not a a localized event to the Roman Empire. It's not something that's happened historically because there's nothing in history that we can look at to to point that out. Um, So we know this is a future event. And it's a time coming that, 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 frankly, you know, those of us in the prophecy community who have, I guess— been wakened up, woke, wakened up, mm-hmm. wakened up. I don't know if they're <laughs> uh, awakened. Yeah, um, to the lateness of the hour is now. You know, this is one of those things that we're trying to warn the world of what's coming. Um, so for me, it's a very encouraging verse. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, there is a sense of voting to it as well. Yeah. Yes, it definitely is. And it says, "Because thou hast kept the word of my patience," so it actually is conditional. For those who are watching and waiting, you have the woke and you have the awakened. I guess that's the best way to describe that. How interesting. Uh, I was, as I was thinking about this program today, I thought about Second Peter 3, 3 and 4, and it talks about scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lusts and saying, you know, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of crea- creation. And I kept coming back to the idea that all things continue as they have been, and they're not wrong about that in nature. Sunrise, sunset, planting, harvest, you know, um, so we can make some good presumptions about the predictability of life. God says that, you know, all things will continue. But on a reality level, uh, Pete, they are sound asleep because things, not all things are continuing as they were because that only works so long because we know how the story ends. We have God's word. 
So I want to start out by take, uh, talking about where this falls apart, and it's called a black swan event. And a CBS News correspondent said on New Year's Eve, 2024 may be the year of a black swan event. For our listeners who don't know what that is, Pete, can you tell us what is that? Well, I mean, the historical r- reference for that phrase was um, used uh, to – because, you know, way back centuries ago, people didn't believe that black swans existed. Right. So it was like saying, you know, a, a unicorn or something. Um, but then they discovered black swans. So then the, the whole meaning of that just meant to, to be that it's something that was unforeseen, um, un, um, mm-hmm. you know, unforecasted. Right. And I, I liken it back to what uh, Donald Rumsfeld, the old Secretary of Defense under Bush, uh, once said. He was talking about. Uh, this was in the early stages of the Iraq War. He was talking about the known knowns, the known unknowns, and then the unknown unknowns. And it seems kind of like uh, silly, I'll, I'll play on words, but mm-hmm. the known knowns are things that are obvious to us that we know that are pretty predictable routine. The known unknowns are <clears throat> potentials for, uh, you know, um, you know, you could forecast a hurricane coming in or a storm or something like that, that you know, a blizzard. Uh, you don't know how severe it'll be until it right. hits, but you know that it's coming. Right. And then a, uh, an unknown unknown is this black swan. It's just something that hits from out of left field. Nobody saw it coming. Or if people did see it coming, nobody believed them that it would happen. And um, so that, that for me, is uh, uh, what the black swan uh, mm-hmm. signifies and, and what we've kind of come to think of it, that term, over the years. Yes, yes, absolutely. And the rapture, to me, is, of course, the ultimate black swan event and even many in the church don't believe it's coming so it's going to catch a lot of people off guard uh except for the remnant who, who are we you know living in um looking forward to revelation three ten. um we, you know the u.s is so vulnerable right now and i think that vulnerability leads um lends itself to events like you know the pandemic we look back on that and say where in the world did that come from well we're learning more all the time but <laughs> pete we got an election year coming up and I'm just going to dump, you know, just dump, jump, I'm sorry, jump right in here. Uh, will Trump be, how do you feel about this, the nominee uh, on the right? I, I think he will. Okay. Um, I think he'll be the nominee. Um, if you look at all the current, uh, um, you know, legis- uh, the legal mm-hmm. actions taken against him right now, they're all pretty trivial. I think they're going to pretty much get dismissed. Out of hand. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the Supreme Court will rule in favor of, of Trump being put back on ballot, so states will not have the right to, to dis- arbitrarily remove mm-hmm. candidates from ballots. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think he'll be vindicated there in that sense too. So, and, and then uh, you know, um, the, the big issue is as as these uh, other Republican uh, not um, candidates, uh, Christie and Ramaswamy, Haley, and all those, as they begin to drop out, and I think. Uh, Christie just dropped out, but yeah. uh, you know I expect DeSantis to drop out, and, and then mm. kind of the last one to hang in there would probably be Nikki Haley. But uh, she's not going to gain any traction, in my understanding, unless you know there's some kind of uh, <clears throat> you know Democrat or uh, electoral tomfoolery going on with uh, <laughs> you know Democrats flipping states to um, vote for Haley, so she gets the nomination. But I, 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 really, I seriously don't think she'll get it. I think Trump's in it. Um, and barring any unforeseen, you know, action taken against him, you know, um, political assassination or anything like that, um, I think he is going to be the, the nominee. And so the interesting thing from my perspective is looking at the Democrat side is that they're, you know, the way that the Democratic Party runs their uh, candidates and stuff, they're not going to have a primary uh, mm. this year because uh, right now Biden's already declared that he's going to run again, but obviously we know that he is – in rapid mental decline due to dementia or whatever he has. I mean, he, he is really struggling, and it's becoming so obvious. I think what they'll do is um, they'll he'll remain the candidate for the Democrat side up until the last minute, and then he'll drop out for health reasons, and then they'll bring in <clears throat> whoever they have lined up, presumably Gavin Newsom or oh. Michelle Obama or somebody. Oh, man. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, it turns my stomach just a little bit. And and as I think about, too, the states, various states, taking him off the ballot, and I kind of rolled my eyes because I thought, can't people see through this? What's the point? You know, if, if, the, if it's that simple to remove a candidate that people don't like, 
uh, what's the point of ever having an election anyway? Let the people decide, which I'm sorry is kind of obvious, I guess. But what about write-in votes? I mean, my, here my mind is thinking down the road. Whatever happened to write-in votes? Even if someone's not on the ballot, couldn't people just write them in? I, is that, I don't know if that's a rhetorical question or not. What do you think about that? Uh, yeah, I mean, people, you can write in a candidate. Um, you know, obviously, I don't think that'll that'll do much. But, um, you know, we haven't had a successful third party, I don't mm. think, ever. Mm. <laughs> you know, it's, mm-hmm. it's been at least since before the Civil War. Yeah. Um, so, oh. you know, in, in speaking of that, I, I like in this, the, you know, whichever way the, the outcome of this election goes, um, you know, if there's no, if there's no 2020 shenanigans going on, um, with, in terms of vote counting and all that, vote dumping and, and ballot dumping and all that, um, I think Trump's absolutely going to okay. win, um, okay. hands down, without okay. a question. It doesn't matter who they throw against them. Yeah, yeah. Um, but with that said, you know, I think this election is probably closer to 1860 than it is to, you know, even 2020. Yeah, absolutely. And I've wondered how the American economy has held on this long when you consider the debt load. It's It's been untenable for a long time, and it's dawning on me finally that it's it's the timing of the CBDCs, it's the timing of the digital currency, uh, because they can prop it up, as, uh, they, this nebulous they out there, can prop this up as long as they want uh, if it means uh, a different end to the story. And I, I've thought that that's how it's been going on. I want to ask you also too, Pete, about um, this film coming out in April um, uh, called Civil War. Have you seen Have you seen the trailer on that? And uh, I mean, Hollywood, of course, is in the spin cycle. It looks like there's a secession involved. Have you seen the trailer on that? Yes, I saw it. Yeah, what do you think? I, th- I saw the trailer to yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I think what this is this is um, what they call um, um, revelation of the method, where hmm. um, they begin to. Um, in occult terms and Freemasonry and all those different groups, um, they consider it bad karma, bad luck, bad, you know, uh, ill, Ill omens. If you don't reveal in some part, um, what your plans are in, in ahead of time. And so <clears throat> I think what, um, it kind of works hand in glove with, um, desensitization as well, because mm. when, or, you know, think about the boy that cried wolf, you yeah. know, when you come out and you start, uh, talking about, things, people become desensitized to it over time. And so um, the way that the revelation of the method works is that if the people that you reveal your plan to, and whether this is predictive programming or through propaganda, through um, the Georgia Guidestones, any, any of those things, right, um, if, if you tell people ahead of time that people would just kind of shrug their shoulders and like, hey, well, you know, whatever, I'm going to go back to doing whatever I'm doing, um, they know they've got them. They know that the population is not awake and it's, it's going to be doubly enslaved when the time comes to pull the trigger on that. Mm-hmm. So, I think I think in a way that um, the fact that you know you have the Obamas involved with the movie uh, yeah. Netflix movie uh, Leave the World Behind, mm-hmm. um, adding realism to this uh, supposedly fictional scenario, and then you have on top of that you have Civil War. Now, now I will say that with <clears throat> Civil War, it's, it's a little bit silly. Um, when you think about it, that that Texas and California would join forces, right? Right, and secede. <laughs> you know, from a yeah. political standpoint, right. um, they couldn't be further ideologically <laughs> apart. But um, I, I think, I, again, I think let's just say Trump wins o- overwhelmingly. He gets two seventy plus on on the electoral college, and and despite all of the the legal drama, despite any of the crisis that happened, we have the election, and he's voted in. Um, you, you may have states that are, are going to just come out and say, hey, we, are, we do not recognize him as the, the lawful president of the United States. And we are, you know, whatever, exercising our right, right to do article, blah, 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 right. in their state con- constitutions. If, if they have one, if they don't, they'll drum one up real quick. And then, um, you know, you may look at some form of, you know, secession. Now, I don't think it's going to be like the Civil War we had back in, 18, in the 1800s. I yeah. think it's not going to be north south it's going to obviously be states and pockets of places uh, mm-hmm. you know spread out everywhere basically mm-hmm. in these uh, deep blue states and stuff that are going to come out and say no um so i, I don't know uh, basically you're going to have the base basically what it amounts to is the, the breakdown of law and order mm-hmm. in a lot of places even greater than what we've seen in the last few years wow very interesting 
I'm, I'm expecting to see it. I did. I did see the other one that you mentioned. I did not know it was uh, from the studios of the Obamas. I had no idea when I saw it. I had mixed feelings about it. I, I didn't think it was very good, but there's a lot of symbolism in it. Um, uh, very interesting how the media is, is has always been. This is their number one job is to sway what we think, and Hollywood is no exception. This is Stand Up for the Truth. I'm speaking with Pete Garcia, Rev310.net, and we're talking about, we're just kind of going around the globe in, in 60 minutes here is, is how I like to look at it. He has a couple of excellent uh, articles, 2024, The Year in Review, and also The Sum of All Fears about the sunset of uh, the kingdom of man is how I look at that, too. We have a few minutes left uh, in this particular uh, half before we go on a break. Um, Pete, let's just uh, cover a couple countries here. Israel, uh, the peace process is dead for now. Uh, you mentioned something about the third temple, and Israel must be destabilized at this particular time. Why do you say that? Well, um, if, if, if this is the Psalm 83 war, uh, which uh, you know we've got mixed uh, feelings on that in, in the prophecy community, some think it's an imprecatory prayer, some think it's a prophecy, mm-hmm. Uh, future prophecy that hasn't happened yet. Uh, whatever it is, it seems very Psalm 83 esque. Mm-hmm. You know, it seems mm-hmm. like it, it's checking a lot of those boxes. Um, but what it's going to do, I think, is going to create a scenario in the Middle East where um, they are going to uh, remove their immediate threats to them, and, and that includes not just Hamas, but obviously Hezbollah, Islamic Jihad, Fatah, the Houthis, um, any other groups that are going to rise up against them. And um, they're going to exert themselves. And I, and I think that this conflict is going to continue despite the growing international pressure uh, until they have achieved their goal of removing Hamas completely from, you know, they're going to put them into the history books. Now, um, with that said, um, the people, uh, I think what October 7th did in, in a lot of ways that was probably unintentional by the, their enemies is, it's not only created solidarity, but it's also created this um, uh, unification as a, as a people group um, where they were really divided before over politics and religion and things like that. I think there, there's been enough eye-opening with the global anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism you know, together that, that Jews around the world are starting to realize that, hey, people don't even care that I'm a Democrat or I'm, I'm a liberal I'm a Jew, therefore I'm scum to them. Mm-hmm. And, and it's, it's been eye-opening for a lot of people, a lot of Jews in the West. So mm-hmm. I think uh, this also triggered in a, a messianic era. You know, they, we were in the messianic era prior to that because there was a lot of Jews, a lot of spiritual waking in the Orthodox and ultra-Orthodox communities, you know, because they think that this is the time, you know, that the Messiah should be coming, according mm-hmm. to Hosea um, 6, you know, chapter 6, and other passages um, Ezekiel 37, mm-hmm. but they also realized that there was a uh, war on the horizon with Gog and Magog. So I, I, I think that um, during this conflict, either this conflict or during um, the Gog Magog conflict, which I believe is after the rapture, but um, definitely within our um, immediate uh, horizon that we can see coming, um, is where the Temple Mount gets, a, gets hit either by stray missiles or an earthquake. And I do see the, the Dome of the Rock and the Al-Aqsa Mosque being destroyed. And at that point, there really won't be any hindrances for the, for the Jewish people. to, to their, They'll begin to demand the rebuilding of their third temple. Wow. So I think the things like with the Red Heifers, you know, I mm-hmm. think there's still four viable candidates. I think they're already viable. I don't know if they've already maybe sacrificed one in, in, in private. Um, but there was uh, an intention to do it on Passover this year or so in early April. So. Okay. Um, I think the conflict will continue until April, at okay. least. All right. uh, wow, it's definitely something to watch, and we're at our break time, uh, Pete. So we're going to just take a two-minute break here. We're going to come back and talk more with Pete Garcia, Rev310.net. I want to mention there's a banner in Tel Aviv that no one expected to, to see. A hero Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your might, Deuteronomy 6, 4, and 5, called the Shema. And that is now hanging up in Tel Aviv, a very secular city. So what what Pete was saying about Israel coming together, that is some proof of that. Uh, So um, we are praying for the peace of Israel. So we will, peace of Jerusalem, we will be back shortly after two minutes, back with more with Pete Garcia.
feedback, questions, and topic suggestions are always appreciated. Email us at comments at standupforthetruth.com. Welcome back to Stand Up For The Truth for this snowy Friday. We're speaking with Pete Garcia, Rev310.net, R-E-V, and the number's 310.net. I read something this morning, because we've been talking about globalism and civil war and all these other things, and we know there are people working behind the scenes and, and the enemies behind all that. But this meme says, if you catch 100 fire ants as well as 100 large black ants and put them in a jar, at first nothing will happen. However, if you violently shake the jar and dump them back on the ground, the ants will fight until they eventually kill each other. The thing is, the red ants think the black ants are the enemy and vice versa, when in reality, the real enemy is the person who shook the jar. This is exactly what's happening in society today. Liberal versus conservative, black versus white, mask versus anti-mask. The real question we need to be asking ourselves is who's shaking the jar and why. But like I said, the... Uh, the um, the enemy of our souls is behind all this. He knows his time is short, and there is no end to the lies, deception, and strong delusion that we're going to see. Pete, I see that you have uh, some traveling coming up in February. You will be at prophecy conferences in Australia, New Zealand, Mississippi. Tell us a little bit about that and how that came about. Um, there must be some good prophecy-loving churches uh, on the other side of the world there. Yeah, um, the Prophecy Conference in Australia, uh, the Gold Coast, and in Auckland, New Zealand, um, uh, Tom Hughes uh, you know, hit me up a while back on that, and, and uh, there was, I guess, you know, four or five people that the the, the partners down there were asking for, and, okay. and, and you know, there were Brandon Holdhouse, Billy Crone, Tom Hughes, uh, okay. Rondo Gonzalez, Ken Michaels, and then me. You know, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I'm kind of the small fish in that group, but... Uh, um, yeah, so you know, it's pretty exciting stuff. I'll be speaking, I think, uh, three times down there. Uh, we just got the schedule yesterday, and I have one. One of my presentations is uh, the Ghost in the Machine, talking about uh, the facade that the, the deep state shadow governments kind of put on to, you know, like they present that this is reality, um, but in reality, you know, we know that that God is uh, the God of the Bible is true, and that that you know. There, you know, when they say things like the evolution is is the scientific uh, foundation for education, uh, we obviously know that that's that's flawed and, and error from the beginning because we know that God created us. We didn't, you know, we're not accidental. We didn't mm -hmm. evolve over millions of years, um, which you know that has all sorts of ramifications. And the second one is uh, the tyranny of the present, which is an article I wrote uh, a while back. But talking about the you know, basically the gist of it is, you know. Uh, um, being limited to the technology of your day and, and how that impacts our understanding of prophecy. So, the wow. Mississippi conference, uh, I met those folks at the Oklahoma conference, and they have a great group there. Um, they're not uh, a church. They are basically a, a conglomeration of different people from different churches that have come together to create their own uh, Bible study uh, on prophecy and eschatology since their churches weren't teaching it, which I think is a fantastic <laughs> idea. Yes. And then the third one is in... Um, so oh, that one that one's in May fourth in Madison, Mississippi, and then the last one is in Guthrie, Oklahoma. That'll be April twelfth. So all Great. of those will be listed on my my main page of my website. There's the information for tickets, how to live stream. Yeah. The one in Australia, though, I think the if the funds for that, if, if people choose to live stream that, uh, that goes to support uh, the IDF and providing you know life saving equipment and and stuff through um, a messianic, a Jewish messianic organization okay. that is connected with the IDF. So. Well, and it's just encouraging to see people coming together, those who still love prophecy and are still watching and waiting. Sometimes you wonder if there's anybody left out there, but it's just an encouragement to see these people putting these things together uh, and even live streaming. I, you know, if it's in Australia, I'll stay up all night and watch that because, you know, time zones and all. <laughs> well worth our time. I think it'll be well worth everyone's time. So getting back to uh, the year in review, just wrap this up before we go on a little bit. Um, you, you write about Canada, Russia, Africa. Uh, Russia, Putin is getting up there in age, and some are saying his health is not holding. Is that an issue? Or I'm sure he's got those coming up after him who are uh, in place to do whatever it is he would want to do, and then some. So what's your take on Mr. Putin? Yeah, I, I do think uh, Putin is probably entering the phase of his life where the health issues are going to become increasingly problematic for him, but his number two, his deputy, is uh, Dmitry Medvedev, okay. who ideologically is very much in sync and in step with, with everything that Putin believes. So they both are of the mind to create a greater Eurasian 
uh, empire with Russia at the helm. Um, and so it'll be, you know, it's both of their goals. And, and so uh, either way, if, if Putin does pass this year, which I don't know that he would, but uh, Medvedev is, is equally um, capable of carrying on this, this uh, plan that, that they put forth. Um, I think Ukraine's done. I, I think Russia's basically either going to, they're going to, the Ukrainians will have to sue for peace or um, uh, the Russians will just kind of go ahead and remove that government from power and demand that they step down and, and basically replace the government there. Um, because the only other option is for them to join NATO or have NATO get involved, which obviously would trigger World War Three, you know, mm-hmm. in, their, in their mindset. And nobody wants that, and the EU can't fight that, and the U.S. has already spread thin mm-hmm. in so many other areas. So I really don't see that situation turning out any better. Now, if Trump does get in, I do believe that um, uh, Canada will, will start to uh, behave more okay. uh, because I don't think Trump is going to tolerate. And when I say he's going to tolerate, he's not going to be able to dictate to them what to do, but he can do through economic measures, kind of force some behavioral changes to for Trudeau. But Trudeau's in there through 25, so, um, uh, you know, we're not – I expect him to be changed out at, at that next election. Okay. And as far as Africa goes, you know, it's just, you know, continually um, a place of, uh, you know, where every, you know, pretty much every corner of it is destabilized to some degree. Mm-hmm. You've got in the central to North Africa the issues with Islamic uh, extremism and the groups there. Uh, killing Christians and basically over trying to overthrow their governments. Central, you know, Central Africa uh, equally unstable in terms of political stability. Um, South Africa is, is, you know, brought Israel up on um, genocide crimes in the in the um, international court. Which, you know, if you apply the Genesis 12 uh, three verse to them, that does not bode well for South Africa. Um, and, you know, of all people to do that, they, they brought it, which is, you know, ironic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. But, you know, I see China struggling. I see China mm-hmm. really uh, getting mired. Their, their economy has slowed way down. They're having a significant issue with their uh, a growing geriatric population that by 2050, most of their population will be geriatric. So I think that they are they're at that tipping point for them where they're going to have to make some decisions now as to what they're going to do. I do believe that they will probably try and make a move on Taiwan um, either this year or if if the Democrats hold office. As long as there's a Democrat in office, I think they, they figure they, they are going to be able to do what they want to do and get away with it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think they fear Trump coming in. So whatever they're – Whatever they're whatever they're going to do with Taiwan, I think it's going to happen sooner rather than later. Okay, wow, so many hot spots. When you think about the death of Putin and and how that would you know throw the world off a little bit long enough to to be a distraction too. There's the potential for this year is just unfathomable. And you're right about Africa. They've been trying to wipe Africa as a continent clean of its own culture and politics for a long time. Islam in some ways have re, has remade Africa into its own image. There have been wars and famines, persecution against Christians, and Bill Gates has been using experimental vaccines there for many years as well. Uh, is there some spot in prophecy for Africa, at least the northern part of Africa? What's your take on that? Well, yeah, I mean, obviously the you're going to have Libya and, and what I saw we call uh, what you know what the what the ancients called Ethiopia, but really I think it's probably more of Sudan, okay. northern Sudan, uh, and Somalia, and probably other groups within Africa that are Islamic, uh, Boko Haram and others um, uh, that will join with the God Make God coalition to come against Israel, and that found, that war is found in Ezekiel 38, 39, and uh, that coalition has not happened yet. Uh, in history, it's, this, this conflict has never happened yeah. because of these nations have always been at odds with each other. But from the north, you would have Russia, uh, Turkey, and Iran, and, and probably most of the stands, uh, those former Soviet satellite nations that are mm-hmm. predominantly Muslim, coming against uh, Israel from the north. And then from the south, you would have countries like Sudan, uh, Libya, Somalia, and others um, coming against Israel from the south. So It'll look so overwhelming that other nations are not going to want to get involved. And the United States in this conflict is not in any position to help, mm-hmm. which, which speaks volumes, right? Yeah. Um, 
Yes, it does. And, uh, it implies uh, the United States is no longer a factor in geo, you know, global mm-hmm. geopolitics. So I think that's, um, that's something that we're going to see here in the not-too-distant future. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, and even since the breakup of the USSR, um, watching the stands uh, come on the world scene, I remember thinking back in the early 90s, um, there were some prophecy new le- newsletters at the time by the Lalonde brothers that they called it. They said it's going to break up. And these are going to be the stands. They are going to be involved in Ezekiel. So that's been something that's been forming. I mean, the wheels of prophecy grind slowly, it seems like, but it's. But I think we've been seeing this for some time. So that is worth watching. Talking to Pete Garcia here on Stand Up For The Truth on January the 12th. His article, 2024, The Year in Review, is well worth your time Uh, rev310.net. I want to switch gears a little bit, Pete, because you have one here called the sum of all fears, and it's it's almost on the philosophical side, but it's just loaded with some fascinating information. And it starts out with a quote by C.S. Lewis, and I love this as we were talking off the air about this is sort of a view at 10,000 feet, and it says, all that we call human history, money, poverty, ambition, war, prostitution, classes, empires, slavery, is a long, terrible story of man trying to find something other than God which will make him happy. And that is absolutely true. Kingdoms, kings and kingdoms shall all pass away, right? But there's something about that name. So we're still in the times of the Gentiles, but I think, Pete, that a lot of this turbulence has to do with the changing of the guard. We're going from the kingdom of man to the kingdom of God, wherein righteousness will dwell. But, you know, the collapse of America, uh, the scheme of it, the scope of it, in world history, okay, we're looking at the big picture. Um, it really should surprise no one. Um, and we don't know the exact time again, of course, of anything of this happening. But uh, what are your thoughts on reality collapsing at the same time? It just seems like reality, uh, what we have always known, I'm a baby boomer, and, and things are so unknown right now, as we have mentioned here. And then you add I, AI into the mix. I mean, uh, I think reality is collapsing around us, and people are having a hard time keeping up. What are your thoughts on that? Well, uh, you know, uh, Karl Rove, who was the uh, political strategist for George W. Bush's first and second elections and still remains an um, you know, important person in, in the Republican Party in terms of influence, he once said that empires create reality. Hmm. And and I thought about that, and you know, the more I thought about it, the more true it became. Because when you think about whatever empire is in the world that's you know at power at that time, um, they create reality for those people that are under their you know within their boundaries of their their authority and their power, hmm. whether it's the Persians or the Romans or whoever. And and uh, they create the laws, they establish the calendars, they they govern the, the money and, and everything that happens within those boundaries of that empire um, is subject to that king or to that system. And so for the last 70 plus years, we've been under the American empire. And I don't, I know we don't consider ourselves an empire, but in terms of land and reach, I, mm-hmm. I definitely think we are. Mm-hmm. And uh, the fact that we've been a global superpower for you know most of that 70 years has, um, definitely created a world order that is in the process of collapsing right now. You see that with a challenge of other nations, uh, former ally nations that like BRICS that are, that are trying to de-dollarize the global economy. And I think, I think right now, in the, and I wrote in the article, I said the, the issue, because we've seen empires rise and fall throughout history. That's as common as the seasons changing or night mm-hmm. and day. This has just been one of those mainstays of human history. But I think, the problem is, it's not that they rise and fall. The problem is being at that transition point between the rising and falling where reality for one empire now is collapsing or crumbling and the reality for a new one is rising up. And I think we're in that transition point right now. And as you mentioned earlier, with the advent of like the internet, uh, with artificial intelligence, with quantum computing and all these game changing technologies that are racing ahead of the um, the the world's ability to to govern govern it you know govern the the processes or even put in any kind of safeguards um, it, it's it's really frightening at where the world is racing to right now so um, I, I love this quote from um, from um, uh, uh, Dr. Seuss he, he says uh, and I don't know, I don't know which book it is 
But he writes, uh, how did it get so late so soon? It's night before it's afternoon. December is here before it's June. My goodness, how the time is flying. <laughs> how did it get so late so soon? And, and mm-hmm. I, I think that within the last 20 years, we have, it has just, you know, if I look back in the year 2001, I'm watching events from the videos from that day. That seems like the 1980s. You know, mm-hmm. it seems like. Uh, it just seems so old to me, mm-hmm. you know, the way people dress and the, you know, the cars and you know, just all of that seems so antiquated compared to where things are today. And and even if I think back to 2020, 2020 seems like a long time ago now. Mm-hmm. Uh, the events of that, that seems like at least 10 years ago, and it's only been, what, three? Mm-hmm. And so uh, time is accelerating. Uh, I think the enemies of God, the these antichrist um, uh, cartels are 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 creating what they call accelerationism, which is this, they're trying to accelerate the collapse so that they can go ahead. It's like ripping a Band-Aid off instead of yeah. pulling it off really slowly. Yeah. They're just ripping it off and trying to get their seat at the table first ahead of everybody else so they can they can land in a good spot. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think they understand this transition point is upon us as well. Wow. Yeah. Expect turbulence, right? I think about the beginning of the book of Revelation. He talks about the things which must quickly come to pass and that word quickly really does mean once it starts the foot's on the accelerator and it's going to go very fast you know we had one year of uh, two years maybe I guess of COVID with all the ramifications but think of seven years I think that's a very long time but once that gets going it's really really going to go Um, and you mentioned here too in this article uh, the average age of the modern empire uh, appears to be between 200 and 340 years and I want to quote I know some of our listeners have heard this before, but the cycle of nations. I want to quote this for people who have not heard this. Uh, it, it shows uh, those who you know, are, do not learn from history are condemned to repeat it. And this really, um, because humans are limited in scope of what they can accomplish, what God allows them to accomplish, um, and then you put the devil in the mix there. But here's, here's the cycle of nations. Number one, from bondage to spiritual growth. Two, from spiritual growth to great courage. Three, from courage to liberty. Four, from liberty to abundance. Five, from abundance to complacency. Six, from complacency to apathy. Seven, from apathy to dependence. And eight, from dependence back to bondage. Um, And you say, such as the world was, so it has always been and continues to be. So there have been many, many empires um, with this this regular cycle here. And and the first time I saw that, I was really surprised how how, um, actually prophetic I consider that to be. But like you say, we're going from the falling of one to the rising of another, and it's hard to keep up. But I love how people just need to see the big picture, and I think that helps people get through that sort of thing. Um, and again, reality has, has just been uh, far removed. You, you talk about something called cognitive dissonance. Uh, is that just a, another word for we're all just completely confused and have no idea what's going on? Or what exactly is cognitive <laughs> dissonance? It, yeah, it is the. Uh, it's kind of like being torn between two states, and in, in okay. uh, you know, uh, mental or you know, understanding where. Let's just say that uh, uh, there's a great meme for this. This guy, it's a cartoon character. He's sitting in this like restaurant or something, and everything on around him is on fire. He's sitting there drinking his coffee. And he's like, everything's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> and, you know, everything's great. You know. Yeah. Uh, and or the uh, the Leslie Nielsen, uh, the Naked Gun, or mm-hmm. one of his comedy. You know, he's standing there like the buildings behind him are on fire. They're blowing up. Everything is just chaos, and he's just waving at people. Hey, nothing to see here, folks. Keep moving. Keep nothing, moving. nothing's going on. Right. Keep moving. That's the that that perfectly uh, uh, identifies this cognitive dissonance we see happening, where you have the government uh, on one hand saying trust the science. Because of X, Y, and Z, you've got to take this shot. You've got to wear this mask. You've got to have double mask. Mm-hmm. You've got to have four different vaccines. And they, they're constantly preaching, trust the science. Or, you know, the world is on fire. The, the world is he- heating up. It's going to melt the polar ice cups in 2016. And they hype science and hype it and hype it and hype it. But then on the other hand, they say, well, you know, a man can be a woman and a woman can be a man. Mm-hmm. And, you know, gender's fluid. And, and then they say these things that completely uh, – uh, <laughs> go against science uh and and so it it creates this this division this schism within a person's psyche and not not a person necessarily but a society psyche about what is real what is true and and 
and uh, yeah. that's that's where I, I go with that. Yeah, no, that's interesting. Um, it is it is a very strange. A schismatic thing because you say here the reality despite our modern conveniences okay we're supposed to know more we're supposed to know more medically and we're just supposed to be so advanced you say we are regressing physically spiritually morally mentally and emotionally as a species while advancing technologically no wonder people uh, have uh, that dissonant thing they, they just cannot connect anymore um I, I guess I didn't see that coming, I, I think, because, you know, you watch all these old sci-fi movies, and I love those old black and whites. Uh, we're just getting better and better, and then the aliens come along and say, no, you're really just uh, dumb as rocks because you can't seem to get along. But um, any, po- any more to add? We have about five minutes left about that regressing that's going on, uh, and the government is no help. Is that right? No. No. In fact, H.G. Uh, Wells... Um, um, his, he was a transhumanist back in the right. 30s, 40s. He he believed that uh, you know, kind of his idea of the future was that uh, eventually there would be these two races of people. You would have basically an elite class who were uh, you call it a technocratic oligarchy or elite uh, whatever, and then you had everybody else who was basically like these serfs, and, and these serfs would be fed bugs, you know, in there. <laughs> right. And, uh, they're basically shorter. They're squatty. They're ugly, and they, they they exist they exist solely to work and to provide a slave labor for this mm. elite class. And so we've seen that in Hollywood. We've seen that in movies, and, and everybody kind of laughs it off. And then at the same time, you have these actors and stuff promoting the World Economic Forum, like, hey, we need to start eating insects. We need to start eating these cricket burgers or roach roach beef or uh, or whatever they you know, mystery beef. meats and wow. impossible meats, you know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, to save the environment, <laughs> and uh, it, it, you think back to those sci-fi movies, and you're like, man, this is like actually coming true. You know, so yeah. uh, it's, it's pretty pretty crazy. It is pretty crazy, you know. And and you say we we are in a postmodern, post-Christian, rapidly paganizing world, drowning in darkness. Um, we're going the opposite of direction that we should. And and you mention all these isms that that people, um, C.S. Lewis said, people have tried to fill the void with. You know, you, uniformitarianism. Uh, socialism, naturalism, Marxism, communism, social Darwinism, eugenics, nihilism, culture. I mean, all these things. Um, you say it's doubtful these men and women who truly understood what the, uh, truly understood what they were doing when they unleashed these things upon our world. And had they known, maybe they would have reconsidered. And we have abortion. Um, we we have all these horrible things. And uh it's only when Jesus returns. But I, I love this article because it, it really points out that that which is fading away, that which is dying, uh, because the, the sin is becoming full in this world, and Jesus is going to come back and judge. We just have a few minutes here, Pete. Is there anything that we missed that you really want to talk about um, as we wind down today? Well, I don't want to end this on a downer. I think uh, if— you know, if we if we hold to this mindset that if the Bible is true, if the God of the Bible is true, if Jesus is true, if if everything in Scripture is true, and I believe that it is, and I believe that reality bears that out. Satan has to work doubly hard to to deceive people from what is the obviously you know what's obvious to them in front of them. When you look around the world, you can obviously see that this didn't happen by accident. There's order built into everything. Um, you know, whether we look down at the sub-atom- you know, subatomic particles, we see the, the, the complexity within the proton, neutron, and the quantum realm. If you go on the other end of the spectrum on the macrocosm, if you look at the vastness of the universe um, and the, the amount of galaxies and stars and nebulas and, and all the different things that are out there, these are details God put in there that he didn't have mm-hmm. to do that. Because for mm-hmm. thousands of years, mankind, you know, could only look from the ground up to the sky. We didn't even have telescopes or anything. Right. He put all this stuff in there uh, because he can. And because it's going to continually, no matter how far you drill down into reality, or big or small, or the smallness or the largeness, uh, it's going to point to God. Yeah. Because it's going to point to design. It's going to yeah. point to a creator. And with yeah. that said, if, if that is all true, then Satan has to work doubly hard. And it, it, it is so much easier to point to people now. The, weir- the weirder the world gets, the crazier the world gets, it's, it's becoming easier for us believers to point to people say, look, 
this is not normal. This is not right. This right. is not the way things are intended. Right. And, and most of the time, they're going to come and tell you this. And that mm-hmm. gives you the opportunity to share the gospel with them, which then mm-hmm. uh, pulls the veil back from their eyes. Mm-hmm. And they're able to see clearly. And this is the freedom. This is what, when, when Pilate asked Jesus, you know, what is truth? Jesus is the truth. Yeah. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but wow. me. Wow. We we're, so, oh, we're done for the day, Pete. I, just, I know we could go on, but I thank you so much for joining me. All creation groans and travails, and uh, we have the answers to life, which is the gospel. Thank you for ending with that, Amen. and thank you for being my guest today. Thank you. All right. Um, a quick announcement here. Christian Home Educators of Wisconsin announces its 2024 statewide homeschool conference in the Dells. Uh, Thursday, April 4th, and Friday, April 5th. Heidi St. John, Israel Wayne, Kim Sorgius, Alex McFarland, Jay Siegert, many, many more. Um, visit chew24.org. That's C H E W 24.org if you're interested. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Have a snowy day.